doesn't occur by itself. It only happens when there is, when as a lack of, or as a result of the lack of something else. When there's no light, you get darkness. When people choose to not follow the light or the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal, you get evil. So you don't attribute it to Allah Azza wa Jal. You know? So, or if you, you know, the other comparison is cold, right? Cold and heat. Cold doesn't exist by itself. Cold only happens when there is no energy or no heat. That's why you have absolute zero. It doesn't get any colder than that because that's when there's zero energy. So, you can use that. Cold only happens when there's no heat. Darkness only happens when there's no light. Evil happens when people don't follow the light of Allah. So this analogy works. I just said, can you give me a glass jar full of darkness? He immediately said, I see where you're going with this. He got it immediately. Fadl. Sure, sure, go ahead. And you're actually a step ahead of us because that's actually an entirely different technique when you talk about uh, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knowledge that Allah Azawajal has that you don't have. What, what khair happens to you as a result of this evil from 10 years ago? You know, all this, it's an entirely different section and it's very valid what you're saying. And the only thing I would invite you to do is to. Uh, because the example I gave you, we're not comparing anything to Allah, we're just explaining how evil is not attributed to Allah. That evil happens when people don't follow the, the light of Allah. Just like darkness happens when people don't, who don't have light. That's the only comparison we we're making. And what I would like to bring to your attention is, I gave you a story where it worked. So I actually don't want you to like this technique. I just want you to accept that it could work with some people. It wouldn't be your preferred choice of argument or explanation. But I just want you to see that it could work. And that's all I'm trying to do in these four days, that I might give you an argument, and I'll tell you a story where it worked, and you might tell yourself, okay, it worked, but I don't like it, I'm not going to use it. Feel free, absolutely. So yes, there are other ways to explain this, and, and they might even be more satisfactory, and you might meet someone that's more satisfied when you explain this to them. Fadda. And, and this is where we, we use the flip side again. And he, Many times we get questions like that. For the atheists will say things like, there was a mudslide in, in the Philippines and you know, how many hundreds of children died. So, okay, what do you want to happen? So you want just the parents to die and the children to remain? Is that what you want? And your argument is even that you know, adults should die but children shouldn't. I mean, for me as an adult, I don't agree with that. <laughs> you know? So, uh, why are you telling me it's okay if I die and if the child shouldn't die? You know, so that's one thing. So the flip side is, okay, what do you want? The mudslide happens, then the rescue team comes, everybody's dead, but all the children are just, you know, muddy and staring wide-eyed, and they're all alive, like a couple hundred children, which now need to be put in homes and all kinds of other things. And of course, they only think of one world, especially the atheists, right? But these, they got a free pass to Jannah, these kids. That's great. They don't have to do anything haram, they don't have to commit zina or anything. They got a free pass, yeah? So these are, there are bigger pictures, but again, you keep pushing his, extending his argument, and he's going to find out that he is asking for too much. So he doesn't want any child to die. He doesn't want any child to fall and get a scrape and a scratch on his knee or anything. And so you keep extending his argument, and he'll find, he will find that he's asking for what, a euphoria or something that's impossible. So you just keep pushing his thought further. Yeah? Someone else had their hand up somewhere there? How about sisters? Anyone have their hand up? We're not doing Q&A yet, yeah, but just if you're on our topic, go ahead. Yes, sister. Uh, 
He's saying that uh, eventually everyone's going to die. So regardless of uh, the method, uh, only once one time it stays alive. So everyone eventually will have their life in very soon as anyone. Is that kind of accurate? That you're saying eventually everyone's going to die? Oh, excellent. So we're only here. Zakallah khair, sister. Very good. And we're only here to go back to him. So some people go out in a mudslide. Some people go out in a sports car. And some people just don't wake up. Yeah? No. Sometimes I explain in a way that if I poke a knife in your own mm-hmm. that's going to be an evil thing to do. Hey, what? When you get sick, then you go to the doctor and he'll operate you. The same evil thing. Ah, I like that, okay. I like the beginning especially. It says, if I poke a knife in your stomach, you'll die. Uh, but if you get an illness and then you go to a doctor, and then he'll use also a, a knife or scalpel, it's a cutting instrument. But same kind of thing, but in a good way. Okay, very good. Excellent. But, uh, is there a God? Well, let me just skip that one, we'll come back to it. Uh, there's only one life and there's no resurrection. How much time do we have? Okay, good. There's only one life, there's no resurrection. Using analogies only, how can you explain this? That there's got to be more than one life. Um, oh, let me share it with you. Uh, Fadl, go ahead. Aha, uh-huh, excellent. So this injustice, this is a big question here. How will the injustices in the world be balanced out, is what the brother said. Excellent. You know, let me explain this from a, a number of different ways, yeah? Um, I remember one... Now, Fadl Abdullah. Okay, so how can you see Allah's mercy if you don't... What did you say? Okay, if there isn't some punishment, if there isn't some bad, how will you realize the value of the good? And this is true. We all know that, right? Those of you who grew up in the States and then you went overseas, you, you come to value a lot of things that you have here. You know that they're so good when you see so bad. Yeah? Complain about things here, complain about roads, complain about that. Then go overseas, look at the roads and like, come back like, kiss the tarmac. <laughs> uh-huh. This is great. <laughs> so you see the bad, you can appreciate the good, right? Um, you know, one time there was a reporter on uh, public radio, NPR. She started to become an atheist and she started to document her thoughts for her show. She said, the first day a voice said to me, there is no God. She said the second day it became louder, the third day it became louder, there is no God. And I became convinced that there is no God. She said after about a week of being an atheist, this is to quote her own words, she said suddenly it hit me. So Hitler just died? She kept repeating it. Hitler just died? And it didn't make sense to her. That if there is no God, someone can be responsible for the death of so many people, and that's all that happened to him is that he died. He's not going to be punished. He's not going to pay for it. He just died. You know, recently in Toronto, an, an atheist was telling me, uh, you know, he's saying, yeah, there should be a reward. There should not be any reward, no punishment. So what? I told him, uh, so Hitler, do you think it's fair that nothing happens to Hitler? And he just started staring at me. And he just said, uh, yeah. <laughs> I said, you wouldn't do anything to Hitler? He's like, N- no. And you can tell he's lying, right? Yeah. So at first he's like, you know. So you know, sometimes people just want to win the argument, right? And he knows he, his hesitation, his discomfort. He knew he, he didn't really believe that. So this woman, she just kept saying, Hitler just died? And that's all that happens to him? So she's actually pulling and drawing on a concept that's in the Quran. Allah Azawajal says, أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ very strong verses. Allah is saying, do we equate like the, yani the, the evildoers, the transgressors, yeah? Like the criminals, do we equate them to the believers? Then Allah says something, malakum, what's wrong with you? How do you judge? How do you judge? So if someone is go- doing good their entire life, then they die and they're buried and there is no life after death. And someone is doing bad their entire life, murdering and stealing. And they die, they're buried, and there's no life after death. Did they go to the same place? They went to the same place. There's no reward, there's no punishment. And that's not fair. So if someone tells you, there is a God, but we're not resurrected. We live once, we're not resurrected. Then, especially if they say there is a God, you can follow the following technique. You can ask them, number one, 
to describe God. You said there is a God, but He's not going to resurrect us. He just gave us this one life. So what is this God? What's His description? No doubt they're going to use things, words in the positive sense about God. They're going to say He's wise, He's intelligent, He's powerful, He's fair, He's just. So now this fair and just God, you're telling me, He's all, all knowledgeable and intelligent, and He doesn't know the concept of reward, He doesn't understand the concept of retribution, and the analogy we've, we always use, it's an old one, yani, but it's like the child that falls down and hits its head on the table. The child will keep crying until the mother says, Bad table. Bad table. Bad table. Hits the table. The, stop, the child stops crying. True, sisters? The child stops crying because even this two-year-old who still cannot speak understands the concept of reward and punishment, understands retribution. And the child knows that now the table got hit the same way it hit me, the child stops crying. How can a child who doesn't speak know this concept and you're telling me God doesn't know this concept? So that's the analogy. We tell them that the, if there is a God, then there absolutely must be a resurrection. Because there has to be reward and punishment. Yeah? People get away with it. Someone murders you, takes you away from your children, you don't get to see them live or graduate or get married, or you don't get to see your grandchildren. He did a lot of injustice to you. Nothing happens to him. And you don't get anything back and nothing. It's just not fair. And work with another analogy, if you don't like the bad table one, um, you know, animals, they understand retribution, right? Um, the monkey, the monkey at your local zoo. When you offend the monkey, he flings things at you, right? If you want to know what, just go to the zoo, <laughs> offend the monkey, but just take an umbrella and extra clothing, and you'll see what he'll do. He understands getting back at people, yeah? And other animals do that. Camels get back at you, right? If you mistreat a camel, he'll get a chance to just grind you into the ground, will crush you, right? I used to always talk about another example of uh, the bird called the honey guide. Anyone heard of that? Anyone heard this example? You know, this bird in Africa that uh, when it finds uh, a beehive, it comes to you, looks you in the eye, starts to sing and it starts to flutter its wings and it guides you to the honey. And so the idea is, you know, humans, they have means and ways to, to remove the honey, smoke and all that. And then after they eat from the honey, they have to leave some for the bird. That's the, that's the whole deal. You can watch it, by the way, on YouTube. Just search Honey Guide. And you'll see videos of it calling people, or, or calling even uh, badgers, because they have thick fur and protects them from the bee stings. And it'll just go, go from branch to branch, guiding people to the honey. Now, they, they say that this bird, if you, uh, if you don't leave it any honey, it tells you, don't worry about it. I know another place where there's honey. And it keeps calling you again and again, and it takes you to the territory of a vicious animal that will attack you. It's a bird. It understands getting even. It understands retribution. You tell me God doesn't understand it? So, uh, so these are just some analogies you can use to explain that there is life after death. There is a resurrection. If you say there is a God, then there absolutely has to be a resurrection. Otherwise, this is an unfair God. Alright, uh, D. Why should I pray if my final destination is written? And this is from Muslims, right? They ask you this. Someone's just moping around the house. Tell me, get up and pray. Why should I pray? Allah wrote down if I'm going to paradise, if I'm going to the hellfire. So why should I pray? And if, if he wrote down, I'm going to the hellfire, I can pray all night and still go there. So, any analogies here? There's some simple ones and some Khalid Fadl. Happen in 